Until recently, this scene would have been unimaginable in Afghanistan, a woman performing exercise in public with men. Fatima's 23 years old and joined the army to help her family. Her father's paralyzed and her mother needs support at home. She told me joining the army was tricky to start with, but it's got easier. How do your male colleagues treat you as a woman in the army? Do they treat you the same as they would a male colleague? They're friendly to me, she says. It's like being brothers and sisters. They're military and we're military, so they respect us a lot. These are the first Afghans to graduate as personal training instructors, a new concept in a country where many don't know where their next meal's coming from. But the military has taught them the importance of personal fitness, and for Fatima, she's learned much more than that from her British mentor, Kate. She's now meeting the same um, fitness levels as uh, a female would in the British Army. What else do you think she's learned from you other than just the fitness side of things? Confidence, um, how to be confident in front of men. Um, I think that's the main thing, just to be a strong woman. Recruiting women into the military involves massive cultural hurdles. The tricky bit is getting the mindset right. Colonel Andy Lambert from the Ministerial Advisory Group says it's one of his team's big jobs. Uh, I think once there's a momentum built up and we start to see some females in senior positions, um, the Afghans will see the value of that. Um, and so I do think it will be self-sustaining. It is linked to incentives and of course that will um, provide its own impetus. What sort of incentives? Support from the international community. So it's financial donations from primarily the United States but also other donor nations. Key to this is $25 million that's recently been pledged solely for uh, facilitating the integration of women into the uh, Afghan National Army. With the female instructors now qualified, the first intake of female cadets will arrive at the Officer Training Academy next month. This will be their accommodation, distinctive in its big high wall to protect their privacy. Women in the military isn't actually a brand new concept in Afghanistan. Many were part of the Soviet-sponsored army back in the 1980s. And this new female officer training course starting next month is the first rung on the ladder to getting women back in the service. But the target for women to make up 10% of the force is a tall order in any country, let alone Afghanistan. There are many European armies that aren't anywhere near 10% in female manpower. So just how realistic is this for the Afghan army? Particularly for Afghanistan, they've set themselves a very difficult target when the place of women in society is that much behind European society. Um, I think in the timelines that they've given themselves, 10% isn't likely to be reached. Um, but even if we can make a difference, if we can get it up to 1% or 2%, that success. Fatima's achievement is undoubtedly a success, but she knows that it will take other women the same courage to join her. There are still many women in Afghanistan who don't work and who potentially want to. What do you want to see for women in general in Afghanistan? She tells me her advice to women is to join the army because they can then sort out their own problems, be independent and define their own destiny. There's still a mountain to climb in changing people's mindsets in Afghanistan. But while recruiting women into the military is a big undertaking, it's an important part of building a secure, stable and modern country. Sally Lockwood for Forces News in Kabul.